Our next speaker is, uh, is, is kind of the archetypical pioneering solo practice direct primary care provider, Dr. Ryan Newhoffel. Um, Ryan is uh, he's one, of, one of my favorite people in DPC, period. Um, and, and Ryan, what's, what's powerful about Ryan is actually he's, he was, uh, I don't think he'll tell, I'll let him he'll tell the story, but he's, uh, he's kind of chairing a, a new direct primary care organization called the DPC Alliance. Uh, which represents hundreds of DPC physicians, mostly smaller solar practice organizations across the country. When Jay showed his map, many of those green dots are, are part, of Ryan's, um, part of Ryan's organization. So he brings with him a, a tremendous point of view and representation from providers, from, I'm sorry, doctors. I'm gonna get this straight, Jordan. You've really thrown me off today. <laughs> Um, from across the country and talk about the Alliance. I think he may use some analogies um, from Star Wars, which are important and dear to his heart. Um, but with that, uh, Dr. Ryan Newhoff. <laughs> well, he just stole my thunder. In fact, I don't know what he's talking about with the Star Wars thing. I, if, uh, the first thing I want to say is in my presentation, if there's any similarities to uh, a certain Disney slash Lucasfilms limited uh, story you may have heard is purely coincidental and there's no violation of copyright laws or anything else so um, again I don't I don't know what you're referencing there with the Star Wars thing yeah I'm not sure uh, as he said I'm uh, Ryan Newoffel I'm a family physician first and foremost I'm a family physician uh, in Lawrence Kansas and I've had a DPC practice since 2011 um, so way back, the uh, name of my practice is New Care, and the first thing I want to do is uh, thank Hint uh, for doing this. This is a really awesome event, um, and not that you guys don't already know this, but Zach um, has been um, part of the DPC movement before um, almost everybody. Uh, I can remember, uh, you know, at least three, four, or five years ago, um, Zach, uh, before even uh, forming Hint, had called me and and asked me a ton of questions. And um, you know, I know there was a lot of people in the last year or two who became interested in the DPC market because it's grown and it's you know, the prospective uh, market for vendors. But Zach was doing that when there was not very many DPC doctors. And I give him a huge amount of credit for doing that and kind of seeing the future. So thank you, Zach. Um, uh, the other thing, and the reason I'm up here uh, is because I'm the president of the DPC Alliance. And if you guys haven't heard of us, that's because we just formed a few months ago. Um, and again, I'm going to tell a story. Um, and is there any nerds like in the audience? Raise your hands. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so please, uh, uh, if there's something out of order with my pictures, don't scream something like, uh, but Mace Window died before Luke Skywalker was born. Because, you know, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is me uh, in 20. 15, I believe this picture was taken. Um, and this is, you know, after four years of owning a DPC practice. So I was pretty stressed out and, uh, you know, had had a lot of uh, sun damage. And uh, I have a nice uh, uh, anti aging doctor, which is how I look like this today. But this is me a few years ago. Um, so I had grown a practice over four years of, of really hard times. Um, there wasn't uh, a huge uh, awareness in my community or around the country about DPC, um, and uh, it was it was really hard. It was a lot of you know a bootstrap effort, um, you know, going around talking to people, um, a few skirmishes with sand people. Um, <clears throat> so um, you know, growing a, a practice from 2011 to 2015 wasn't easy, and it's it's not easy now. But even back then, it was it was harder, and there wasn't a lot of help. Um, there was you know a, like like you guys have have seen today, there were some people uh, operation back then, but there wasn't. There wasn't good blueprints, there wasn't a lot of good kind of proven ways to do a lot of things, so we were, you know, making it up. Um, but, you know, I my, grew my practice steadily and, and came to kind of a, a comfortable, stable spot, had gotten some media recognition. Um, my most proud moment was being a supermarket tabloid, which I believe is still my wife's most favorite. Uh, I think it was in, uh, Brad Pitt was in that one as well, so, I mean, it's probably just a coincidence that they put me with him, but whatever. Um, <laughs> And so, you know, there was a lot of doctors uh, um, in those early days who were really doing things on their own. Um, and some of us were, you know, well recognized in the media, but a lot of us were kind of underground. Um, and, you know, you may have met some doctors like this guy. Um, this guy um, has a lot of passion. Um, these are the doctors who know there's something wrong with the system and want to fix it. Um, they have a, a lot of raw talent. Uh, their midichlorian counts sometimes are pretty high. Um, and, you know, they're great doctors, uh, but they don't know how to, you know, realize that vision of what they want to do. 
do when they were in medical school. Um, and so a lot of these doctors end up finding DPC. They hear about these doctors doing these innovative things, these cool practices, and they, they think DPC is cool, but they don't really know what it is. Um, and so I think there's more and more of these, these uh, Dr. Lukes out there, and, and a lot of them are, are, you know, again, passionate, but somewhat angst-ridden. Uh, if you guys haven't met DPC doctors, sometimes we're, we're pretty opinionated. Um, some of us are, are pretty idealistic, and some people would even say naive. Um, I still am probably all of those things. But um, uh, so I think in those, those early days, it was a lot of, uh, you know, this guy and this guy, you know, meeting up out in the desert one-on-one, -on -one, um, mentoring each other, um, helping each other, uh, telling us, uh, telling each other what had worked and what hadn't worked. Uh, and that was great, you know, that was a great way to kind of teach each other, but it kind of had some limitations. Um, so I think as, uh, you know, in the last few years, uh, there's a lot of different groups that have formed um, through grassroots events, uh, conferences, forums, uh, friends, um, I think this was taken at the DPC Summit in 2016 or 17, but uh, I had a beer in my hand, but it's not pictured here. Um, so a lot of these conversations, you know, with the people who had been doing DPC for a while have been, you know, they've been going on for a while. And, you know, although we were still very committed to that kind of one-on-one -on -one grassroots grow DPC one doctor at a time, we also recognized there was a lot of limitations. Um, we had been repeating ourselves a lot. Um, so, if, you know, I'd answered, how do you do wholesale medications once? I mean, it's been 7,000 times. And so all these forums that had been created uh, were fantastic. We found ourselves, you know, getting to the point where there was enough doctors who were entering the DPC market that we, we couldn't sustain that uh, and be very efficient. Um, so we started talking, you know, a, a bunch of uh, elder types had, had talked for a while about forming some type of academy or league or uh, association organization, which are kind of dirty words. Um, but I think there had been some local and regional organizations in DPC. I'm involved in one uh, called the Midwest DPC Alliance. And those are all kind of these organic, you know, uh, organizations usually in a small area, city or state. Um, but there really hadn't been, uh, you know, an organization created by doctors to teach other doctors, um, you know, how to, how to do this type of thing. So, um, you know, after many years of discussion and debating and yelling at each other, um, had kind of decided something like this. Um, and there is an heir here. I don't know who this Princess Leela Orga, I believe this was Julie Gunther who said this uh, in one of our meetings. Uh, if you guys don't know Julie, she's awesome. She's in Idaho, presented here last year. So I think a lot of us reached that conclusion that we needed some type of you know, unified uh, voice and, and uh, place for, for DPC doctors, uh, particularly the solo, small, independent doctors to, to call home. So we kind of decided to, um, you know, create the DPC Alliance and, and maybe give a home to those lost Jedi and rebels. If you guys don't laugh at my jokes, see, I get this, like, laser pointer. It's just, like, sword you all, just, you know. Is Zubin here? No, he's not here, good, because, like, he would get up here and do some awesome Darth Vader stuff with me. So, um, so this is the DPC Alliance, and we were formed um, with 50 founding members, um, and a lot of them here are today. Uh, from the ones I've seen, uh, Dr. Rob Lamberts, uh, Emily Scott, uh, Stacey Benson, uh, Paul Thomas, and Landon Russell are here, but there's 50 of us total who formed this, and just launched in January, and we're already up to 240 members in about 44 states, I think. So we've, we've grown quite quickly, and I think that's a given. A, I, I give the credit to that to our founding members who have a lot of you know, credibility among doctors who, who are looking for uh, how to do DPC. So what did we do? Uh, well, the first thing we did was create this really great logo. Uh, that was the first thing we did. And they were like, okay, now we have a cool logo. What are we going to do? Um, so we created this mission statement. And um, I think the first and foremost is the DPC Alliance is uh, uh, by doctors for doctors. And, um, we do, we do have some kind of criteria to be a member, but it's, it's the physician oriented and uh, uh, doctors who are doing DPC um, or planning on doing DPC. And, and the main uh, intent of our, the main mission of our organization is to give education, uh, mentorship, and advocacy. And this other phrase, which I still don't understand, is organizational intelligence. But I think you put stuff in there like that to sound smart, but I'm not sure how to define it. But. Um, Okay, so, um, so what does that really look like in action? So I think education, 
um, is, is hugely important. Um, there's lots of great uh, uh, resources out there uh, now to learn about DPC, but we want to become you know, one of those that kind of brings a lot of those things together. We're going to definitely create some original content um, for doctors. Um, but I, I think a lot of doctors are kind of in that contemplative planning stage, and I think those are the ones, although some of them don't have baby faces like this, um, I think those are the ones who probably need the most guidance because, you know, although they, they're, they're kind of determined to do DPC, they, they need a lot of direction. And they're, they're skilled physicians, they're, they're, they're great doctors, they're well-known in the community, but they don't have that kind of natural or, uh, you know, inclination or experience to understand the business and, and all that messy money stuff that comes along with medicine. So um, we, we definitely have a, a strong sense of entrepreneurism. Um, so most of the DPC Alliance doctors own and operate their own practices, but we're not exclusively for that, but we definitely want to continue to promote that kind of innovative entrepreneurial spirit that I think is, is kind of given rise to the DPC movement. Um, so, you know, once we're all trained up, I think this is Rob right here on the left side with the ponytail. Um, so, you know, once, once doctors are kind of get, get up and run their practices, um, we want to give them a lot of tools. Um, so once they have their lightsabers and they're, they're ready to, you know, fight the good fight, um, we, we want to uh, help them in a lot of different ways. One of those ways is, is, is partnering with, with vendors and, and people who help power DPC practices because although we're, you know, ruggedly independent uh, doctors, we need people, uh, companies like Hint and other technology vendors to, to help us do what we do. Um, working with employers, as been mentioned so much today, uh, can be challenging, so we need, you know, help in that realm. Um, there's a lot of other service industries, and we purchase supplies, medications, that type of stuff. So we want to really help uh, our, our members and doctors make, make that easy. Um, for people. Um, although, you know, we, we talk a lot about fixing primary care, we, we as primary care doctors recognize that sometimes people need somebody other than us. And when that happens, we really want to uh, promote broadly in the healthcare system transparency, which is sorely lacking. So a lot of that is kind of helping doctors and their own communities understand the rest of the healthcare system and how to get their patients um, transparent pricing on services. So, uh, okay. So the last part of that is advocacy, and I think this is probably the one stickiest, and the reason is is because uh, we don't all agree on everything, believe it or not. Um, and so I think that the, the overarching idea for the Alliance is, is awareness and understanding among many different you know, organizations, providers, media, academics, other organizations. So the Alliance really wants to serve as kind of a, uh, you know, a, a shared voice for some of these issues with those parties. Um, there's a lot of talk here today. and, and and for a long time about how to scale and get to the next stage of DPC. And I think, uh, as, as Jay mentioned, and, and is definitely true, there's so many different flavors and, and variations of, of DPC. And, and the Alliance is not here to, to necessarily tell people which one is the best one or this is how you do things. But we, we do want to continue to remain true to those core principles and values that made DPC what it is. Um, and so there's a lot of rah-rah DPC, but I think one of the much harder things is, is other than just cheering it on and, and, and cheering our own successes is, is when we do start getting outside influences um, or things that might you know, change the way that we practice, um, we need to make sure that we're kind of staying true to those principles. And, and saying some of those things is uncomfortable. You know, uh, it, the, the doctors who are in the alliance uh, uh, don't even all agree on everything, but I think we need to continue to have that open dialogue and make sure that when we're growing DPC, we're not um, doing it at all costs. Um, and so I think what, that would be one of the purposes we serve is, is to educate uh, our members on, on various partnerships and other businesses and other interests that may get involved in their practices because you know, I, don't, I don't think anyone here wants to see any DPC practice fail, um, but we need to kind of consider those, those uh, relationships really, really thoroughly. Um, and as Jay did a great job of mentioning, um, working with bureaucracies is not easy. Um, it's, uh, it's very, very messy and um, you know, I, I think the Alliance will serve some some uh, uh, role there, but uh, there's lots of other organizations that are doing a great job, and we don't we don't tend to you know uh, speak for all of uh, DPC on that regard. Um, and then uh, I think the other thing with advocacy is there's so many traditional legacy players in healthcare uh, that I, I think the DPC market right now isn't large enough to be a huge threat, but I think that's coming, um, and I think there's going to be tons of opportunities for forward-thinking legacy players to kind of harness the power of DPC, and there's going to be lots of DPC practices and business try to plug ourselves in to the system, but I think that, uh, you know, we have to be, again, very wary of that. Um, and speaking from my own personal perspective on this, the, the overarching 
reason that DPC works is the patient. Uh, you know, I, I know, we, again, we, we're very, you know, physician-centered and we want to empower physicians, but for me, DPC has always been about changing the way that the patient thinks about their care. Because if the, if the patient doesn't change the way that they think uh, or operate, then nothing really matters. You know, no matter how hard a doctor works, no matter how smart a doctor is, if a patient doesn't do something different and better for themselves, this is all for nothing. So that's kind of the guiding core principle with advocacy for me, um, is I want patients to be in control of, of their, obviously, their clinical care, but money as much as possible. So um, I think I'm just about out of time here. So thank you, guys. Uh, I have uh, lots of other thoughts, but if you have questions, um, you can find our website right here. Uh, we're on the internet, uh, Twitters, Facebooks, all that type of stuff. So if you have questions, let me know. Thank you. Yep.